2017 brought us a ton of games inspired by our youth. Okay, fine, my youth. I know I'm old. We had Sonic Mania inspired by Sonic 3 and Sonic CD. We had Super Mario Odyssey inspired by Mario 64 and Mario Galaxy. A Hat in Time also inspired by 64 style 3D platformers. Mighty Gunvolt Burst, and even before that, Mighty No. 9, which we don't talk about. This resurgence of retro style gameplay isn't over yet. This year, we still have a ton of games in the same vein to look forward to. New AAA game releases all feel the same. Everything's a generic shooter or a Souls-like clone or a press X to parry brawler. We need innovation or in some cases, simplification. Big publishers don't like to take risks on these smaller games anymore. And because of that, a lot of these games that I'm gonna talk about are indie games or Kickstarters. So if you have some sort of weird aversion to indie games, then go- Bye! Ow. We'll start with one that is arguably just as important as Sonic Mania, and that's Mega Man 11. It's been eight whole years since we've gotten a Mega Man game of any caliber. We've only gotten collections ever since then. Not that we don't appreciate those, but like, come on, man. Capcom probably saw the success of games like Sonic Mania and thought this would be a good time to make a comeback. I'm a big fan of the franchise, so I'm stoked he's back. But there's something about the trailer that rubs me the wrong way. I'm glad they went with a 3D art style, but the concept art looks way better. I hope they don't mighty number nine this one. There's no release date yet, so we can probably expect this one pretty late in the year. I'm cautiously optimistic. And if you haven't already, for the love of God, get Azure Striker Gun Vault for your Switch. It fills that Mega Man X, Mega Man Zero void very well. If Mega Man 11 is bunk, at least we have this to fall back on. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night is a spiritual successor to the Castlevania series. It was kickstarted by Castlevania series producer Koji Igarashi. It's a great way to skirt around that Konami trademark real good. Castlevania games are synonymous with 2D exploration and backtracking. They call this style Metroidvania or Igavania. Despite my issues with backtracking in games, I think the combat makes up for it in the Castlevania series. So I'm excited to see this one, also later in the year. Bloodstained was the most funded crowdfunding campaign for a video game for a short period of time, only to be surpassed by Shenmue 3. Shenmue was a Dreamcast exclusive that felt more like a Chinese action movie than a video game. Its biggest accomplishments were the vast open world and depth of story. Don't be playing this for great game mechanics. At the time, it was the most expensive game ever developed. Unfortunately, I don't see much demand for a game like this in 2018. Tons of games have vast open worlds and deep stories. In fact, I think games these days need to slim down their open worlds. Shenmue 3 will provide a much needed conclusion to the series, something fans desperately need. But if you aren't already a fan, maybe sit this one out. Listen, I'm happy that developers are trying to relive my childhood, but let's be realistic here. Some of these games just aren't gonna be that great. Celeste is out this week for the Switch. It's probably out by the time you're watching this. It's not a clone or a spiritual successor to anything that you know of. It reminds me a lot of Super Meat Boy or Dust Force, which took inspiration from a lot of retro games. It's an action platformer. Emphasis on the platformer. It draws obvious influence from games like Mario or Ninja Gaiden, just cranked to 11. It has a beautiful pixelated art style. I'll be checking this one out very, very shortly. The longest five minutes is a traditional retro JRPG with a twist. Of course there's a twist, there's always a twist. The twist is that you start the game at the final boss and your character has forgotten everything. You play the game through a series of flashbacks to try to remember what the hell got you there. It's a fun idea, it looks cool. I'm not a JRPG guy. In the same breath, I will toss out Lost Sphere and the beautifully named Project Octopath Traveler. If you're into JRPGs, go look these up. Have somebody else tell you all about them with a lot more enthusiasm. System Shock was a critically acclaimed first person PC game from 1994 that was cited as a major influence to the Bioshock franchise and the Deus Ex franchise. It had a unique blend of action and puzzle solving that wasn't seen in gaming at the time. Ken Levine said it was driven by player powered gameplay, the spirit of letting the player drive the game, not the game designer. This is something that games like Breath of the Wild take full advantage of. 
this year, System Shock is being remade. Ideally, we could expect Dishonored or Bioshock-style gameplay. Realistically, it's a Kickstarter game. I don't trust anything anymore. God, I'm so negative about all this crap. I am going to quickly riddle off a few more that deserve honorable mentions, things that are maybe a little bit vaguely retro-inspired. A Way Out is only retro-inspired in that it encourages split-screen gameplay, and that's something we don't see anymore. The Last Night has a beautiful pixelated art style, just ignore whatever crap the developer said like five years ago or something. Shadow of the Colossus is getting a remake. Pac-Man Championship Edition 2 Plus is a, a thing. Owlboy, I talked about last week, but it's something you should definitely check out when it's released on the Switch. And Yoshi and Kirby for the Switch are games that you should already know about and be stoked for. I would mention Metroid Prime 4, but I would be shocked if that game came out this year. If I had to guess, I would say we could expect more information on it at E3 this year, and then a full release early next year. So this year doesn't have the big, huge, retro-inspired games with AAA sales numbers that we had last year, but there's still a ton of retro-inspired games that you need to look out for that are coming out this year. Developers are starting to go back to the good old days. They're starting to realize that not everything needs to be a big budget blockbuster. I'm kind of burnt out by all of these AAA experiences that try to take over your life. Yeah, sure, Anthem looks good, but I don't always want to be fully immersed in a sci-fi world. Sometimes I want to be gleefully hopping along a 2D environment. Most of these games are coming out for the Switch, which is f***ing awesome because that's the only way I'll ever get to play any of these things. So what do you guys think about this resurgence of the retro style game and all of these games coming out? What did I miss? Leave it in the comments below, add me on Twitter, all of this other social media garbage. We've been premiering all of our videos at 10 a.m. Eastern time on Twitch first now before they go up on YouTube. This video is very special because it's premiering on the front page of Twitch. Hi, if you're one of those, hi, yes, hello. Uh, how are you? Did you know that the front page of Switch isn't just for uh, eSports? Are, are, you, are you sad you're not getting your lol right now? Anyway, we got new videos almost every day here on YouTube. We got live streams all the time on Twitch and on YouTube. Wolf Den Live every single Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And we got gameplay streams on Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And of course, I already talked about all Twitch streams. If you're new here, this channel is primarily Nintendo Switch focused, but I like to talk about, you know, whatever the hell I want to talk about. So this week it was games that I liked that I'm looking forward to, so screw you. I think this is a good representation of the type of content you can get. Not every video has to be a Switch hardware list video. Now, as always, the most important things that you can do is subscribe and share this video with a friend, a friend who you grew up with playing games like this and can be just as excited as you are and as I am about these games coming out. Anyway, thank you guys very much. You guys have yourself a good week. And if you're on Twitch, uh, here's me playing more Mario Maker.